I was about to say back to back, but I forgot I had a really late lift last night. But look around. The sun's out. There's a bazillion fluffy ass clouds in the sky. Apart from the fact that it's a little bit on the chillier side, this is pretty much a perfect fucking day. Not that it matters. I mean, even if it was a typhoon, I'm still gonna get a crazy chest pump. But if you look around and something's just generally fucking cool, you know, maybe try to let it improve your mood. And if you look around and everything's kind of shit, don't let it get to you. Honestly, that's probably the best advice or the best approach to just walking around in life at all is, you know, you got to remember things, uh, or maybe not remember, but this is kind of getting into like some, you know, control over your own thoughts and whatever else, but you know, there's nothing in the world that can make you upset. There's nothing in the world that can put you in a bad mood. Right? There are just things that happen all around you, and then it's kind of up to you to let them, you know, kind of upset your internal zen, as it were, you know? So, when it comes to stuff like that, I think I do try my best to stay out of the way, in a sense. Maybe not, that's maybe not the best word, but you've only got, and this is kind of, this is the same point, point, but kind of coming from a different angle. You've only got so much fucking mental capacity f in a day. You know? So if you're wasting fucking half of it, listening to random drama and like silly gossip, and just, I mean, just stuff that's kind of mindless, then by the time you get to stuff that you actually want to focus on and enjoy, like if you're watching this video, probably your fucking workout, you're kind of already sapped, man. I mean, we've all been there when your head is just really not in the fucking game because you've just got like real life shit going on and that's typically not when you're going to have the best workout. You know? of, of course, I'm relating it to, to lifting, but it just goes for anything. You know, you're probably not going to have a good day at school or at work or like with your family or whatever else if you kind of are constantly subject to the negativity that's around you. You know, think of, uh, think of the, think of this quote, you know, it's like a ship only sinks once the water around it gets inside. You know what I'm saying? So take with that what you will take with that what you will. But all I'm trying to say is it's a nice day out and I feel good. So I'm going to try to translate that to a happy ass lift. So I plan for chest, a variety of pressing Cable flying, cable flying, what do you call it that? Cable flies, and pec deck, and maybe a few other random variations. You know, nothing too crazy, and it's only one muscle group, so this is not going to take me that long. And this is one thing I've noticed whenever I diet down, is the workouts themselves are pretty fucking easy, you know? And I don't say easy as though, like, I'm going to go easy on my sets, but the fact that... You know, I'm not so full of carbs. I'm not eating a ton of food. I'm depleted, which is going to make me, I mean, just physically weaker on my sets. You know, my muscular endurance is now, you know, slightly diminished than it was when I was fully bulked. What that means for me is I can almost hit failure quicker without so much weight. So like I was saying yesterday after legs, I was doing really hard sets of hamstring curls, like two fucking failure. And on some of those sets, I was barely out of breath because muscularly, you know, my hamstrings gave out way before my lungs did. So it's, uh, all I'm trying to say is I think my endurance is a touch better. You know, I don't have a full stomach, uh, even though, you know, the food that you eat has energy in it, it does take energy to digest it as well. So, you know, I mean, we all kind of understand if you fucking stuff your belly on Thanksgiving dinner, you probably don't want to go for a jog, <laughs> you know, like just kind of being leaner. I feel like it does make the lifts a little bit less taxing on my whole system. 
and then partially just because I've got better cardio too from being lighter, you know, not having such a load from all the food and shit. But yeah, so, you know, nothing crazy. I'm still going to go as heavy as I can go for, you know, eight reps minimum on like, you know, the heavy pressing sets. But if instead of 315, that ends up being 275, who cares? If instead of 315, that ended up being 225, it might be a little bit of a hit to my ego, but as long as I still make it a good set and I go hard, whatever. Day by day, you're going to be stronger or weaker. <laughs> so don't be so concerned with hitting a specific weight for a specific amount of reps. Uh, I know that may sound silly because that's like the core idea of progressive overload. But I say, and I mean, I'm not saying this is like the only way to do it. But for me, I find it a little bit easier to focus more so on making my sets as intense as I can, you know, and pushing them as hard as I can for, you know, eight to 10 reps on the heavier ones. And just by doing that, you know, just by going through the process of making sure, okay, I'm really going to push it this set. Then, you know, the next lift or the, you know, the next lifts for a while for me to get that same level of intensity with you know, that same number of reps, I'm just going to have to go heavier. So instead of writing down in a book, okay, I did 300 for 10 reps last week. Today I'm going to do 310. I just kind of make sure that I'm, you know, really pushing it. And then progressive overload just kind of comes. I'm not saying that's the only way to do it, but that's just kind of how I like it. And it would make sense. The harder you lift, as long as you couple that with reasonable recovery and diet, you're going to get stronger over time. So you're just not going to be able to curl the 30s for a working set anymore. You know? And the longer you do this stuff, weight that used to be, you know, fucking what you can only do for a few reps. I mean, I still remember pretty distinctly one time uh, me and my brother, this is way, this is early days. We went to our grandparents' house. I mean, I'm talking like four years ago. And he was spotting me on a set of bench and I did 185 for five. And like five was fucking pretty much failure for me. And now, I mean, 185 is fucking whatever, you know? So it's just kind of cool. It's kind of fun that lifting has a very distinct, you know, kind of notches of progress. Like, eh, it's just fun to know, okay, I used to be able to do this and it was pretty fucking hard, but now I can do it no problem. I mean, that's like the fucking epitome of progressing at something. So, let's get in there. I'm no genie, or I'm no psychic, but if I were pre if I were to predict the future, I think a pump is coming my way. I was kind of, well, I thought I was shit out of luck because there's no power lifters right now who I usually borrow some chalk from for benching because the knurling is a little... Uh, slick on some of these bars. I totally forgot there's a rock wall on the other side of the rec center and just went over, borrowed some chalk from them. So I've already properly warmed up cable shit and then a plate, two plates, three plates, a rep of three and a quarter. So this will be a nice heavy starter set. I'm sure if I really push it on this one, which I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do 365 again. I'm gonna have to drop it to 315, but let's, uh, let's get started. Okay. 
Let's make a drop set. I was like 100% sure I was gonna fail if I tried to do one more rep at 365. But I wasn't satisfied just wrapping it. So, already down to 315. I think that might be enough of that. Whew. Chest press will be perfect next. Make a drop set. Do something cable related. Okay, so this pec deck, it's fine. It's not my favorite, but one thing especially unfortunate about it is the stack is just not fucking heavy enough, even after doing those hard sets of pressing. So to kind of counteract that lack of weight, I'm gonna sort of do a superset style situation here. So I'm gonna run over to the dumbbells, probably grab like the 40s or some shit, and then exactly like this hold them in front of me and manually flex my pec and kind of like do a drag fly in a sense so you know 10 or so reps whatever enough to them burned out and then run over here and finish with fucking you know pec flies so well i'm gonna go over there but i'll i'll come back in a second i'll show it for the next one <coughs> Yeah. One more. I'll show the dumbbell flies this time. Yeah, there you go. Alright, so. This movement does not really focus on the stretch 
of the pecs at all. So I wouldn't call it a complete chest movement. Like I would never replace my whole chest day with these. But in terms of the actual fucking contraction and like really flexing the fuck on my chest. Fuck. I mean, no press or fly feels the same. Like I'm at the point now where I'm, my upper chest is big enough where as I'm doing these, I can feel my upper chest hit my chin. And that's almost kind of an extra fucking indicator for me to flex even harder. But another one here, super set it with the flies. And then I'll probably move on to something else. With this set of flies, I'm not gonna go slow and squeeze it. I'm gonna kind of bust out the reps later on in the workout. I mean, I'm still gonna make it a hard set, of course, but since I'm already kind of fatigued and pumped, I don't mind doing a set that's really just sort of fucking pumping out reps just because the way it kind of burns me out. Plus, I know I'm gonna get some fucking extra blood flow in here. So let's, uh, let's hit this. This one will probably be a better set too because I'm not just, I mean, I'm sitting right here. I don't have to walk back and forth. I think just one more set of something. Not peck flies again. I think I want to see if I can get some cable flies going. So let's uh, let's see if that's in the cards. Okay. Uh, now we're done. Let's pose down. All right, chest day complete. I'm in the perfect or at least most perfect goon lighting of the gym. Fully pumped. What else is there to ask for? What else is there to freaking ask for? Nothing. Not in my book, at least. So, let's see how we're looking on this. <laughs> oh my goodness. <coughs> I was about to say, let's see how we're looking on this flat chest day, but if the mirror is anything to fucking go off of, this is anything but flat. No, oh, goodness. Let's see how the last row is looking. Oh. 
Oh, I love it. You really do not know what it's like to hit a good vacuum until you've gone from fully bulked up with a fucking full stomach of food to pretty much zilch. And I had some Chipotle today and some shakes, but that was pretty much fucking it. Oh my goodness. What other chest poses are there? This one especially will gradually look freakier and freakier the leaner I get, especially midsection area. There we go. No. Okay. I think that's all I fucking got. Let's roll. Let's get in the car. All done. You know what I get to do now? You know what I get to think and do now? Let's go home and chill. Go home and eat. Do a little bit of... Just a little bit of schoolwork. I spent most of today helping my team manufacture a little something something to shred plastic. Not lifting related, of course, but it was good to finally be done with that and get to use my free time for something extra cool, like a chest pump. And then now, it's over. A nice calm 8.20 after a good 40 minutes of chit-chat. Who could ask for more? Who could freaking ask for more, in all honesty? I, um, I got Chipotle earlier today. Not something I would call particularly diet-friendly, but I had some tacos in the morning, and I saved three of them for after the workout, which I now get to go enjoy. So once I eat those three, that'll put me at about 1,500 for the day, and it's only 8.30, so I get to have a treat. I get pretty much another 1,500, and that'll put me up to 3,000. And I will be firmly within the, within my range of a calorie deficit and just continue to get leaner. So you know, don't forget, or don't forget, but just remember if you do bulk up and then start cutting down that initial phase, that initial few weeks are, I mean, I'm not going to say the worst that you look, but yeah, pretty much the worst that you're going to look because you've still got all the body fat on you that you built up from the, uh, from the bulk. And now all of a sudden you're no longer full of carbs and water and glycogen from all the food you're eating. So now you're, you're fat and you're flat. So as these lifts progress, there should be pretty noticeable improvements, not size wise per se, but more, you know, freak factor wise. I'm talking striations. I'm talking veins, right? Insert any other cool lifting term. So what else do you think I'm about to say? Right? We're, I'm going to, we're locking down the, I'm going to give you a little bit of a spanking here. You have not been doing your cardio and I know it. And frankly, I just do not understand why. I mean, look, to go from no cardio at all to daily cardio, that's a big jump. I'll admit it. But, I mean, have you even tried to do cardio once this month, once this year, as its own, you know, little trip, little endeavor in the morning to start your day off? I guarantee you haven't, man. And you're just fucking missing out. In a dieting phase, it makes sense. You do cardio, you burn energy, you're going to get leaner because you're going to have to use more fat for fuel. We all get that part. You know, everybody can wrap their head around that. But don't forget, even in a fucking bulk, when you're trying to gain mass, cardio, I think, is still going to be beneficial. Because, yeah, you are going to burn some energy, but that's just going to mean that your, you know, your daily expenditure will be a little higher, so you're hungrier for more food. You know, if you run around all day and you do physical work of any variety, playing around, labor job, whatever, if you're fucking moving around burning calories all day, it's not like suddenly you've just burned more calories and there's no recourse 
every action has a fucking opposite reaction. Okay? So if you burn 300 calories or whatever by way of cardio, you're going to be hungry for that extra 300. You know, it's not like you're creating yourself a sinkhole that you're going to have to deal with. And when I say cardio, I do not mean a fucking hour-long run. I don't mean fucking bike sprints. You know, I'm just talking about 30 minutes, low intensity, steady state. Get sweaty about 15 minutes in. Pretty sweaty at, by the 30-minute mark. I usually go by, you know, trying to make the machine say that I've burned about 300 calories in 30 minutes. <clears throat> That's kind of the pace that I do. Fuck, man. It works. And then, in the workouts, if all you care about is the pump, which, I mean, we all fucking do, you're going to have a better time lifting if you do your cardio because you're not going to get so winded, right? Especially if you're trying to bulk up and you're just full of food and you're fucking, I mean, you're physically just going to have more stuff inside of your body. You're going to be a little bit more winded from your heavy sets. So, to counteract that at least a little, cardio is going to help you better lifts, better pumps, you're going to be able to eat a bit more food, especially when you're dieting. That can be a big factor. You know, I mean, that's going to let me eat an extra fucking whatever. Whatever extra fucking kind of food I want to eat. So I don't have to be so strict with my diet and really you know, limit myself and I'm fucking hungry all the time. I mean, it just makes sense. It just makes sense. There's only one downside. And it's just the fact that you have to do it. And apparently that is a pretty fucking big downside for a lot of lifters. So if you want to separate yourself from the herd, of course train hard, of course push it. You know, maybe start doing more sets to the point where you're fucking screaming. If your gym allows it. But it's going to be a pretty big step too if you fucking... Get your seated bike going, or your Stairmaster, or your treadmill, or your elliptical. You know, you can do whatever. I just like the seated bike because I can play on my phone at the same time. When you're on a treadmill or a Stairmaster, you're not really, you know, you're kind of wobbling back and forth. It's just not so stable. But you know, I can only tell you that, well, I mean, I'm going to say it another million times, but... I've got a very, I think I have probably a low turnover rate when it comes to convincing people to start doing their cardio. But that will not stop me. So plan for tomorrow is back with maybe a touch of rear delts. Shouldn't be too complicated of a lift like normal. Rows, pull downs, pullovers. But I will make sure that I am... P-A-P. -P. Pumped as possible. So, I will see you then.